Hey everyone, the day is finally here. The Duke. I've been waiting for this since October 6th, 2016, uh, when Seamus Blackley sent out that first tweet asking people if they had interest in uh, something like this. And I, I guess there was enough interest, so they released it. Finally, this is uh, today's May 14th. Um, I didn't get this until a couple days ago. It was supposed to come out on, I believe, the 30th of April. And then there was some kind of weird issue with customs or something like that um, from GameStop. So I don't want to get too much into it. I was pretty salty about it when it first happened, but I'm over it. I mean, stuff happens. GameStop, you know, I mean, it's so easy to jump on the GameStop hate bandwagon, but... You know, anyways, it's finally here, and I'm really happy about it, so uh, let's get to the unboxing. Before I get into it too much, uh, I do have an original Duke here. This is my my main Xbox gaming controller. I love this guy. Um, I've been using the Duke since the Xbox first came out in 2001, I think, um, because I originally didn't own an xbox i went over a friend's house who had an xbox with a bunch of controllers and he only had one duke and then he had a bunch of controller s's and stuff and i had the biggest hands between all my friends so they would make me use the duke and i just got used to it <laughs> and then when i got my own xbox eventually i got the duke controller and i've been a duker ever since <laughs> that sounds gross also um if you'll notice that there's an xbox in the background that's my special xbox that i kind of did for this video specifically, well, for the Duke, um, I kind of wanted to have something a little extra for the video to unveil. Um, so, yeah, here it is. A custom Xbox original with custom paint job. Uh, I spent actually a lot of time, I spent like a few months on this thing because weather and everything uh, permitted or did not permit me to paint um, over the winter months. So I finally finished this thing. Um, Actually, a few days ago, just in time for the Duke, which is cool. But yeah, so um, at the end of the video, I'll go over more details on that. So if you're interested in the original Xbox, stay tuned for that or skip it, whatever, I don't care. Here's the Duke. Now, <clears throat> in, pre in preparation for this video, I was going to try to do my best Duke, uh, Duke Nukem impersonation. So bear with me here. <clears throat> Well, I came here to chew bubble gum and do an unboxing, and I'm all out of bubble gum. Yeah? No? That was pretty bad. Well, I came here to talk about my feelings and do an unboxing, and I'm all out of feelings. What you, what's your best Duke, Duke impersonation? Do you have a good Duke impersonation? Well, I came here to do an unboxing and use the litter box, and I don't use the litter box. I came here to do an unboxing and then go inside that box afterwards. Okay, let's get into the unboxing. So I'm going to get it be doing kind of a first impressions little review of this too as we do it. So first off, the box is awesome. I got to say, um, the it's matte finish, but then where the controller is and stuff, it's like shiny. If you, Yeah, you can see it kind of there. Oh, there's a little damage there, huh? Um, must have been the customs, maybe when they were beating it up with their machine guns and stuff so i really like the finish on everything really quality stuff man uh, it's like a two-part box all you gotta do is undo these two tape here and then it um, the top should slide off it's got the little hangy like it's gonna like it's gonna stay on shelves this the sucker's going off uh off the shelves faster than you can uh i don't know do something but um i actually t i asked gamestop I, I i asked them about it and i said how many pre-orders did you get for this thing and they said, you're it, man. <laughs> the one I, the one I went to, I said, man, like, I am i don't know, maybe I live in a bubble, but I was like, this is like going to be the hottest selling controller of 2018, man. <laughs> and they said, you're it. So maybe, I don't know, maybe a couple thousand of these babies got sold, but I'm guessing it's probably a really limited uh, release. Back has all the features. Classic design featuring the original Xbox animated startup screen played right inside the Xbox button. And then it's French, and then Spanish. Vibration feedback for realistic experiences. All right, you're kind of advertising standard stuff. Um, but the cool thing about this is 
It has bumpers, which is really cool. Um, and a, heads, a headset jack, headphone jack, which is really cool. Uh, I actually was in the process of doing this with, I have another Duke controller that's really, like, really in bad shape. So I was kind of uh, hacking it a little bit, and I was going to rewire the black and white button and make some shoulder buttons uh, to be kind of like an Xbox 360 controller or something. But they beat me to it, and they did a, a exponentially better job than I could. But yeah, so here we go. Window, uh, Xbox One and Windows 10 compatible, which is great. I don't have an Xbox One, unfortunately, um, but I do have a Windows 10 souped-up gaming PC, so that's what I'm going to be using this with. I don't see me using it too much because it's kind of a collector's item. So, But let's get to the unboxing part. Real easy, just a couple little tabs there. All right, we're going to slide it off. Oh, I'm excited, man. This is great. Okay, ooh, here we go. Oh, man, look at that. So here's a thank you card. This is awesome, man. So Denise Shadhari, uh, a little bit, she's the one that actually designed the Duke. Um, there's a really cool story behind the whole thing. Essentially is uh, the engineers designed the internals of the controller before they designed the externals. And she was stuck with the task of making a controller to fit around these giant PCBs. And she honestly did the best she could with what she was given. And, uh, you know, but, um, and then of course, Seamus Blackley, the, uh, the grandfather of this controller and, uh, a bunch of other really great people, I'm sure. <laughs> so yeah, that's really cool, man. Quick start guide. Uh, it's probably just like plug controller in. All right. <laughs> This is so nice. Oh my gosh. This is like, this is how you do a box, man, for a controller. This is, this is like a collector's item, man. This is so, I mean, it is, but oh my gosh. This is ridiculous. So it's not wireless, but the controller is wireless as it stands, but you've got to plug it in. Oh my gosh. This box is so nice. So, okay, so here's the controller. It's got the nice plastic here on the back. It's got the uh, Hyperkin name and the controller thing. Oh my gosh, this is so nice. This is, this is a blank spot where the memory cards would go. Okay. So, at first glance, the controller is exactly... The same quality as as the original. The button feel is the same. I'll be it a little louder, but that's maybe because it's fresh and crisp, you know. The shoulder buttons, the new newly added shoulder buttons, a little mushy, but not bad. They're quiet though, you know, which is nice. Not as much tension on the triggers as the original the original has <clears throat> the triggers are really tight so you know a um, little harder to pull down all the way these are real easy so maybe a little loose for the precision i guess but there's not many games that require you know super ultra elite precision on the triggers you'll notice that the lt and rt are kind of etched onto the triggers here uh, that's not like that on the original Duke because pretty much you have L and R. Dimensions look about exactly the same. I'd say the Duke, the original Duke, the triggers are a little thicker. That's just a kind of first glance, but I'm going like really fine tooth comb over this thing. But the sticks are about the same. Maybe same as maybe a little looser than the original Duke. The D-pad. <laughs> Is still not great. It's all it's wavy glory. Definitely not like for playing pro Street Fighter games. Yep, back and start button are the same. No, uh, obviously no Microsoft etched in the bottom or back and start etched on the on here. It's kind of just the the logos, which is cool, I guess. Yeah, everything else looks 
looks pretty much right on. I'd say that the buttons, the the XB AY, they're not the same. They're they're made. You can tell they were made with a slightly different process. The new Duke's um, buttons are, I want to say, more vibrant, more defined. The 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 lettering is more defined, so that's pretty cool. The plastic feels about the same. The original Duke, it's hard to tell. You can kind of see it here. The original Duke has more of a textured grip on the plastic, and the new one is more smooth. So that might just be like the current standards, I guess, uh, what people expect out of a controller, maybe. Maybe people don't really like that textured grip. I don't know, you know, market research or something, or maybe that's just what they decided to do. So far, it feels really good, though. This is a really quality controller. It's not super light. It, it has some substantial weight to it. Uh, it looks like it uses regular Phillips head screws for the assembly. There's no, doesn't appear to be, oh wait, maybe right here. Doesn't appear to be any stickers over the screws, so I'm I'm very tempted to take this guy apart, and I think I'm going to, but we'll see. Here it is, in all its glory. So far, I'm really impressed. There's a, there's there's some definitely some differences between the original Duke and this one, but that's okay. You know, uh, obviously they don't have the same molds and everything and, and the processes that were made to make the original. But at first glance, this baby is like a one-to-one -one replica. There's just some slight little button feel differences. And obviously we have these, the triggers. So let's look what else we got in here. That's about it, really. Uh, just a really nice foam packaging. Oh, this is this little piece here. This piece that's separated is actually glued in there. Yeah, that's it. Just a black box inside. Packaging gets an A plus for sure. Really good packaging. That's what I expect out of a, you know, kind of a niche collector's controller. This is exactly what I expect. You know, so far I am completely not let down. I don't know what the word is for that. <clears throat> Oops. Just a hard plastic shell around the uh, USB. USB feels pretty standard quality. It's actually pretty thick. So a thicker gauge than I'd say most uh, standard USB cable, which is nice. And then uh, there's definitely some good length to it. I would say about six feet. Let me see if I was right. Nine feet. Wow. Okay, nine feet cable, and it's got. Does it have the breakaway? No. That's just a uh, really nitpicking. Uh, okay, so here's where it's gonna lose some points. The Duke, the classic Duke, and I know people are going to think probably the same thing. See this cool green translucent, like you can see the shielding underneath? This is cool. This screams Xbox, right? The dongle uh, isn't transparent, but some of the dongles were. I hate saying the word dongle, by the way. It makes me feel dirty. But I think actually when I bought this controller, this was supposed to have the translucent dongle, but... Whoever refurbed this controller or whatever, resold it, gave me the uh, opaque one, which is like cool, I guess. So if this if this cable was translucent green, oh my gosh, 10 out of 10, would buy again. Just a standard black cable, kind of disappointing a little bit, but it's a USB micro, which is standard controller fare. I probably going to USB Type-C next generation of controllers, but this one is sticking with it. Pretty pretty standard stuff here. Nice long and uh, very actually it's, the cable's got some girth to it, so that's cool. But yeah, can't can't complain too much about it. It definitely loses some points in my mind about not having the uh, not having the translucent green. But what are you gonna do? So, anyways, that's the controller. So I guess all we can do now is we'll take this baby off. so nice i can't wait to plug this baby in and try it out so let's go do that i just also wanted to say that this today's unboxing was filmed in front of a live studio audience he's just literally just sitting in his chair watching me do my unboxing like a good little boy you good boys
Alright, so here's the controller. Not the best lighting, I apologize, but I, I want you to be able to see the boot, the boot screen or the startup screen or whatever you want to call it. Here is the controller itself. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. So we'll see what happens when we plug in. This is my first time plugging it in, so the drivers and everything will have to probably yeah, configure. Ooh, it gave a little rumble. Oh, there we go. I don't know if you can see in the corner over here. It says Hyperkin Duke. Ready to go. Oh, I love it. Does that stay lit up like that? That is so beautiful. This is cool, man. This is <laughs> This is so cool. This is the future of controllers, man. Controllers with screens in them, I tell you. Dreamcast started it. People laughed. Said it was stupid. Not really. No one, I don't know if anyone actually said that. But little color screens in controllers. I mean, it's so cool, man. I, I hope eventually people come out with like mods or something for this thing. Let's go ahead and give it a test run. I got a game here uh, installed. Nuclear Throne. Shout out to Vlambeer. Really cool studio. I watched. I used to watch them on Twitch all the time streaming like making the game and stuff i'm gonna go ahead and give this game a little test run maybe oh there, <laughs> there we go Let's see if it recognizes the controller and everything we'll see uh okay not yet not yet let's try the controls gamepad here we go on all right okay now it recognizes it it recognizes it obviously as an xbox controller I haven't played this game in quite a while it's changed a lot since I last played it all right here we go first off if you have small hands this controller is not gonna be for you <laughs> this controller is uh, very big oh that's right I have ammo count uh, and if you have big hands, then it works well. If you have medium hands, you might be able to make it work. Feels good. Feels exactly like an original Duke. Can't complain too much. I think the biggest issue um, with people with small hands will be reaching these bumpers up here. Even for me, I mean, I say my hands are like medium large. Reaching these uh, bumpers are, is going to be quite tricky. Uh, possibly harder than using your thumb to use the white and black. I mean, this thing is just a beast. <laughs> all together so I'm trying to do uh just kind of a first impressions here i'm gonna start playing this game some more <laughs> do i buy frames nope there we go is this controller good for fast paced stuff maybe not the sticks feel good obviously the same as the original duke they have uh their domes with like a and then a convex a concave dome inside the convex dome. The left stick has a slightly larger concave than the right stick. I don't know, I'm sure there's some kind of ergonomic reasoning behind it, which is cool. The right stick is slightly less concave, but um, I guess it's maybe more for precision because you can kind of stick your, your thumb in that little concave and get a real precise kind of rotation there. Maybe, I don't know, I'm just spitballing here. But um, the right stick is just for more broad general movement. The D-pad is, it's the wavy D-pad. It's very vague, which is, um, you know, works for some games, actually, you know. Oops, 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 oops. Oh, I died. So, <clears throat> anyways, as you can see, the controller feels great. It, it looks great. I just can't get over how awesome that little light-up screen is. Is it possible to change that? I don't know. I am very tempted to take this thing apart, so stay tuned. Maybe in a future video, I'll take this guy apart. Just a quick little playthrough, you know, just messing around. Um, I can see myself using this controller, sure, for, like, casual kind of, like, maybe games, maybe like this, or maybe, like, an RPG or something where you're not, like, doing specific precision activities. <laughs> well, I came here to give a final verdict and think of something funny to say, and I'm all out of funny things to think about to say so let's go over the rundown of uh of my final verdict slash review right so first off visuals and appearance and the boxing and everything it gets a nine out of ten for that it looks exactly like the original duke except for the logo is is a led you can't really go wrong with that some of the things that 
take a point away, right? And this, you know, isn't a big deal. I wish the wire was hardwired and and or it was translucent green, like the original Duke. One of those two would probably bump it up to a 10. Not that it matters. This is a great controller anyways. But the boxing is just great. It's got that nice dense foam. You open it up and it's like, oh, you know, it's just displayed and it's like ready to go. And it's just, you, you feel like you've actually bought a collector's item controller which is awesome so i give it a 9 out of 10 performance this is both on the hardware and ergonomic side of things if you have small hands this is like a 1 out of 10 in performance but because my hands are slightly larger and i can kind of get around this controller i give it an 8 out of 10 um, on the hardware side of things you know you plug it into your windows 10 computer it recognizes it right away, and you're playing with an Xbox controller. No issues at all. Most games are good to go and solid there. So performance, an 8 out of 10, mostly because of the ergonomic standpoint. I mean, even me, using these, uh, using the bumpers and stuff is a little bit of a stretch. Uh, almost literally a stretch for my hands. Build quality. I give it a 9 out of 10. This thing is feels... Almost exactly like the original Duke, so as, as far as I'm concerned, if you meet the manufacturer, the original manufacturer standards for a, I would say, a re reproduction controller, you're pretty much there. The only thing that um, takes it away is the textured aspect of the plastic. I mean, if it had that kind of textured feel, I would give it a, a you know, pretty much a perfect score. The cable they give you is a good USB Here's the Duke's USB con controller cable, and here's just a standard cell phone cable. As you can see, the Duke's is uh, significant, significantly thicker. The screen worked great. It was nice and bright. The boot animation was awesome. So yeah, 9 out of 10 for the, for the build quality. And then for value, so this is where it's going to lose a few points just because this is just a mostly a collector's item. You know, you're not going to buy this for your son or your kids or your daughter or whatever for playing their Xbox One. That would be really weird, <laughs> you know. This is a collector's item. This is for people like me who grew up, you know, in my, I think I was early teens, ah, mid-teens, when I used this controller, uh, you know, as my with my first Xbox. The kids who's xbox one is their first console they're gonna be like what is this thing this pretty much belongs i want to say kind of more of like on a shelf somewhere that'd be cool if there was some way you can like plug it into the wall you might be able to and just have the xbox logo lit up kind of just as a collector's thing i don't really particularly see a lot of people using this every day maybe it's fun to get out and mess around with so for value i'm going to say a seven out of ten i mean it's seventy dollars for a basically a old style controller that not many people can use effectively. All right, so as promised, here's the YouTube debut of my custom painted Xbox. Uh, I had a lot of fun painting this guy. Definitely a little bit of headaches here and there, with, but that was on my own personal doing. So I painted it like kind of a, a shiny flecked silver uh i don't know that it's like satin nickel or something was the rust-oleum color and then i did the white accent the finish isn't perfect as you can see it's kind of scuffed a little bit here and there but that was the condition of the xbox when i got it and then the jewel was a lot of headaches too i did it as best as i thought i could there's a couple little nicks here and there on the uh you know underneath and stuff like that but at first glance, you know, on my shelf or in my my cabinet or whatever, it looks awesome. So I can't really complain too much. I did <clears throat> custom. I changed the lighting to blue and purple. I think purple like when, you know, you have errors or something or whatever. And then uh, the controller ports are all lit up blue. Nothing crazy there. I didn't do the lit up jewel like some people do. And then inside I replaced the hard drive with, a, I think it was 8 gigabytes before. And I, I slightly upgraded it to a terabyte. So like a, you know million percent upgrade and then i soft modded it with uh, all the usual stuff you know just to play you know uh all my legally obtained copies of games and stuff like that here it is yeah pretty standard stuff i used a paint pen a white paint pen to do the xbox logo and stuff i just want to say thanks for watching everybody this was an awesome uh 
awesome controller and I really enjoy it and I can't wait to use it. Feel free to check out my uh, Twitter and stuff like that uh, for art and uh, my Patreon and stuff like that if you want. Um, you know, not, not begging for money or anything, but just check it out if you're just interested in artwork and stuff like that. Uh, I'll see you guys later.